Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Keith B. Dixon. Today we're going to be talking about perfectly clear and landscape photographs. So in the first five minutes or so, I'm going to run through a few slides and just kind of give you a feel for uh, who I am in case this is your first time. Um, it also gives us five minutes for anybody that might be checking in late so that we don't have to uh, recover any of the information. And then we're going to dive in for the rest of the 55 minutes nonstop um, processing with perfectly clear and looking at landscape photos. I'm going to let me drill that down for you really quick. But before I do, I'm just going to start these slides and then I'll come right back to that. And if you can hear me okay, just pop in a, a quick message if you if you can hear me okay. And right about the bottom of the hour, I'll be checking in with you. So if you can just hold your questions to the bottom of the hour, so 3.30 Pacific Standard Time, I'll uh, check in and see if there's any questions I can answer. And uh, I'll be giving away a uh, discount code as well. And just to let you know, I will be at Photoshop World. I'll be speaking at 1 o'clock at the Ath Athen Tech booth, um, and I'll be demonstrating Perfectly Clear Live. So if you're going to Photoshop World, stop by and say hello. I'll definitely um, definitely be there presenting all three days. Okay, so let's get this show on the road. All right, so as I mentioned, my name is Keith B. Dixon. I'm a commercial photographer, and uh, I currently have three brands, consumer brand, commercial brand, and an architectural brand. So um, I'm pretty spread across the board. My favorite, obviously, is going to be architectural. And if you're big in social media, if you're big on social media, big in social media, let's definitely connect. And Twitter is probably the biggest platform for me, 30,000. And uh, just recently um, I ranked number three in uh, cloud with the hashtag, using the hashtag cloud computing um, in the world, which was a pretty impressive uh a pretty impressive accomplishment to say the least been a lot of work but um twitter is a great way to, to connect with me in social media facebook examiner.com on there you'll find a lot of the articles i, I write they're uh, review and opinion based so um i talk about a lot of different products uh, and things in the industry pinterest which is a collection of everything so it's a good way to see who i am from a social media collective uh, and Google Plus as well, which I use mostly for educational purposes. So, um, perfectly clear is an image correction tool, and it's that's going to be really important to um, to understand about this. And what what it's, what it's essentially going to do is just correct issues. Sometimes issues that you can control, and and most of the time issues that you can't control. And I'm going to give you a lot of examples of those today. Um, before we do, I just want to tap on um, file structure. If you're when you're loading your files in, be sure that you're creating a backup in the process. So you're going from your source file, which could be your camera, and it's always a good idea to pull your card out and use a card reader. So um, when you're transferring your files, load onto a destination drive something with redundancy. Uh, maybe um, if you don't have that capability, maybe you, you just have like a small drive. Just Back it up to a thumb drive, a CD-ROM, something so that you so that you can have a, a, a some safety in in uh, and when you store your images. So we're going to be talking about landscape photography today, and let's drill that down. So there's um, a lot of different types. When we think of landscape photography, generally we think of you know mountain mountains and countrysides and things like that. But landscape is actually um, drilled down a lot of different ways. Social landscape photos, where we uh, better known as street photography. Um, there's environmental that might include people and buildings and things like that. Those, those are the two most common. And today I'm going to show you a combination of just about all of those. So um, if you're a landscape photographer, you're just looking at or a street photographer, definitely, and you're looking for a way to just process your folders, uh, your files just a little faster and um, pick up some techniques, this will definitely help you out. So, we're going to be working out of Lightroom, and um, in Lightroom is just uh, the most common and popular platform. There are other ones, Photo Mechanic and 
uh, a few other ones, but for uh, for purposes here, we're going to be working out of Lightroom. And I also want to mention that you can use Perfectly Clear in Photoshop as well. Um, I, I rarely do because of the way my workflow is set up. So usually when I'm going into Photoshop, it's for a creative edit or um, maybe it's to fix something or remove something. So um, for the most part, I like to be a pretty organic shooter, so I don't do a lot of processing to, to my photos. Um, so just so you know, that that is a possibility. So if you're a Photoshop user, um, you're, you're good to go. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, photo. It's a real simple photo. And part of the um, interesting thing about these, I, I photograph transportation a lot in my street photography, and I generally try to incorporate people. Um, if you follow me online, um, and you've particularly seen uh, the lattice board by Photo Shelter, you'll see where they featured um, these images or images like these. So they're, they're very useful. You're not going to get rich shooting this type of stuff. And for most people, it may be a little uninteresting because it's not super creative or um, it's not super processed. Um, it's just telling a story right there. It's just, and I want to say maybe even a static story. But it's there and it's history recording. So let's take a look at this photograph here. And um, for the most part, I'm going to go right. I have my, by the way, I have my folder set up right over here, right? And um, I use another program to translate my raw files. So um, these are just these are all TIFF files. And I'm going to make this just a little larger so you can see kind of going into it what it looks like. And there's a couple different ways you can get the file. I'm going to give you the, the, the keyboard shortcuts to get to perfectly clear, to bring up the dialog boxes. One is shift command edit, and that's going to bring up this Lightroom dialog box. And once you've installed perfectly clear, you can go right up here and select it. And as you can see, I use Photomatics. Um, I've been using it for years, a lot of versions on that, um, that I've been through. And in this first section here, um, and I'm going to come back to this a couple different times just to remind you, we can process right through our photos and have them come right back in the Lightroom, right? Um, just by selecting these drop downs. So as you can see, I have a, a preset for landscapes, details, vivid. Those are all automatic settings within Perfectly Clear, right? And then I have user presets as well. Or that this is actually my, my preset here. Um, the other one is the... Uh, perfectly clear preset, which I'll use a lot. So I have a lot of presets here that I use, right? So I'm just going to put those back. And I'm for right now, I'm going to, I'm just going to leave it on landscape, right? But I'm going to click off there. And here is where it gets really important for your workflow. So um, generally, I don't use subfolders as much, but what I will do is pick a folder. And here, I'm just going to a folder I call correct it. Right. So I'm just going to our folder called correct it. And I that's that folder is telling me that I've already processed that image. Right. And then in the you don't pretty much have to worry about anything here. I'm going to leave all this the same. You can rename your file. Um, you can use a TIFF. I use TIFF files because I'm coming from raw in the TIFF. And here's a tip for if you're using Light, Lightroom and raw files, Lightroom will omit certain information in the raw file folder. As, as your image is being loaded, it's a set of instructions. Lightroom will omit some of the, the header information in your raw file. So you'll notice sometimes when your file loads into Lightroom, it, it looks really sharp and then it goes dull. And the fix to that is obviously to load your camera profile in the Lightroom. But if, you, if you're shooting with four different cameras, it's going to be a lot of extra work to do that. So um, I use a different program to translate those raw files. And I output them as TIFFs, and there we go. I'm going to click off that. That was for something else um, that I was doing. But resolution here, about 240. And if you want to get a file that's around 2 megs, right, one of the things you can do is um, just go right here, and uh, you're going to put – is that the right – yeah. You're going to put about uh, 1,500 for – or not 1,500, 1,500 – uh, you know, it's a slip in my mind here. So let me, uh, we'll come back to that. I have to remember what it is. But um, you could, when you're resizing, if you want to get like a file that's around two megs, maybe you're sending them to a client. They're going to just use them for the web. Um, 
you can click on click in here and set the megapixels i think it is to uh 1500 that'll give you like a two meg file so something like that but we're just going to click off on that for now and keep it just like this export and i'm just the file is inside of that corrected folder already i've been through this process so i'm just going to click overwrite in case we make some new changes and i'm working with a tiff file tiff files can be really big sometimes so you have to be careful about you know how you compress them this is going to be uncompressed and just so you know i'm working on a macbook air so that's my travel computer i'm away from the house right now okay so as the dialog box comes up you'll notice there's three different window options here in terms of how you can see it like this and then half view and you can do it vertically as well i usually do it like this i'm kind of a linear guy but as you can see it's corrected just looking at that folder or at that file in lightroom um i mean we probably blew right past the uh, the tinting issue here and as you can see uh we've gone right in here and with perfectly clear and changed it and that's really how simple it is so if you have hundreds of these files that you want to process for whatever reason um and you know you don't want to go through and, and adjust sliders for each one especially if the light's changing right maybe you're shooting different exposures you just want to be able to eliminate the color cast without having to change the the organic feel of the photo and as you can see um it just knocked down that color cast right away and you can see it it looks like green this we're going to put these side by side i'm going to shrink this down just a little bit and you can see and this is in landscape mode and the way i'm going to explain because there's a lot of technical information a lot of technical ways to explain this but what i'm going to say is it just deepens the shadows right changes the depth right and here's our auto presets right and it's literally just this easy so let's go here you can also click on the, in the screen like that to get it to right so if we just want to enhance some of the details right and this is a dark photo already so um using landscape mode just darkens it but as you know it increased the the lighting right here that's hitting the front of the cable car you see that so we just basically raised our contrast right we raised our contrast up with the hd feature here right a little bit of a change great change com greater change compared to here so here we're just deepening the shadows so you have to really just kind of play this by ear and that's the great part about just going through clicking on these buttons you don't have to waste a lot of time right let's say you like this though right and here's where it gets really nice let's say you like this photo but maybe it's just a little too dark you can actually go in here and manually adjust the exposure you see that we can bring that contrast back to make it look like the original photo right remember that that's how it originally looked right so the algorithm inside of perfectly clear said hey you know what this is a better option right here for this photo and maybe you want that contrasty look so you can just push it back to about right there that's the control that you have and it's generally for landscape photos going to come within these three areas or these three groupings right here now i want you to be careful with noise um, and sharpening because um, a lot of the times we have a tendency to over, over sharpen the photos. And I, I want to say when you do sharpen your photos, be sure to enlarge at least 50%, you know, so you can just kind of move around. I'm hand holding um, a, a 80 to 400, which is, um, I mean, if industry standards, consumer standards, by consumer standards, not industry, but by consumer standards, uh, probably not that great of a lens, but I like it. I like this lens because when it's on, it's really on. So I'm hand holding here because I'm just basically shooting this photo um, for purposes of showing you guys the class here. As you can see, it's not too bad. It's, it's not too bad in terms of the softness. Um, I, do, I do notice it gets a little soft, but as you tend to increase the sharpening, right, your image really starts to kind of break apart from a pixel standpoint and the thing that I want to tell you is when you're sharpening your image be sure that you zoom in so you can see you see this right in here this is where the image is basically breaking apart right so your pixels are are just kind of just coming apart um, the noise is increasing 
inside the photo. So when in dark, and it happens a lot in dark areas, and if you're going to print an enlargement, this is going to be magnified, by the way. That's one way to think about it. So if you see this in here and you go to print an enlargement, this deficiency will be, ma will be magnified. So be careful. I'm just going to back off the sharpening here, and you can see the difference. You see that? See where it just kind of went away, right? Um, if we click on tint. Uh, so there's no tinting issues with this, which means the white balance is pretty good, right? And that's what I rely on um, perfectly clear a lot for that. It's one of the, the features that I love about it the most. So as you sharpen your image, you got to know that things are going to get a little softer, and that could be a problem. If for the web, I'm going to zoom out here. For the web, you should be okay because at this size, you're not going to see all of that. And, and as you can see, you can't really see it here. So don't be fooled by the image quality there. All right, I'm just going to save that in the corrected folder. And I'm going to move on. I'm just going to peek over here briefly and see if, uh, okay, great. Everything looks good. All right. So checking in, make sure you guys uh, could hear me. Okay. Now, here's, um, here's something else. I'm going to go to this next photo. So... Uh, here I was just looking at the light. I was literally sitting on the corner just waiting, you know, to see what was going to be interesting. I call in my creative zone process, I call that the absorption phase where I sit there and I just kind of look for things, patterns, lines, shapes, lighting, whatever the case. And I just saw how the when the cable cars went by, the, the lighting just hit it a certain way. Right. So um, another way to open um, perfectly clear is to control click and go right up to edit in and perfectly clear. That's gonna bring your image in right beside your original that you edited. So these are virtual copies. You're not working on, in Lightroom, you're not working on the actual copy, right? Um, these are virtual copies, but we're gonna to go to the corrected folder or you can just go file, export, and select it here. Keystroke would be shift, command, edit, right? And that would bring up the same dial dialog box, or you can just go up here and click. It really just kind of depends on what you want to do. So we're going to leave all this information the same. I'm going to click export. And the thing that I want you to know, there's uh, about 18 photos here. I could batch process all 18 of these photos with uh, one setting, right? Okay. So as you can see, it works pretty quickly on the TIFF files, right? And Look, we still, this is our original right here. I'm just clicking on the screen, right? And if we put those side by side, I'm going to I'm gonna make it just a little smaller so you can see the, really see the difference. You can see it really just enhanced. We're working in landscape mode, right? And whatever you click here and exit out of, that's, where, that's what Perfectly Clear is going to go back to by default. But as you can see, it just really enhanced. It gave it a little bit more drama than here, right? Now, I'll be the first one to tell you, this, this, this photo is not going to win any awards, but... In a layout, in some type of layout, in, in relationship to other photos, this could be a great piece. So if you're out there shooting, if the, if the image is technically wrong, you know, just toss it out. Sometimes they're not worth fixing. But if you see a photo and you're in question about it, um, save it because you never know. Graphic designers, are they think on a whole different plane versus what we versus how we see images and if I want to go in here so I'm going to click on tint and this is what I like about that I call it the one button processing right and believe me I was a I was anti-automatic at one point right I didn't like anything automatic I wanted to have complete control but the thing that I realized over time is when you're processing a lot of photos the longer you sit there the more money you're losing, the more money. And it doesn't always equate to money, but it, it, sometimes it equates to your time, you know? Okay, so it's not money for you. Maybe money's not an issue. Maybe it's the fact that you could be doing something else with your with your family, you know, maybe uh, taking a drive, whatever the case may be, shooting more, whatever the case may be, right? The whole ideal is to get it done as professionally and as quickly as possible, right? That should be your goal. So we're just going to go back to single view here and fix tint, right? Okay, I kind of like, I'm a, a warm feeling kind of guy. So um, I like images warm. Sometimes I like them real cool. It just kind of depends, right? But let's say we like we like this image, right, in fix, fix tint mode. But we also like this image as well, right? So we're going to go back to fix tint. 
and we're just going to go over to the adjust mode, right? And the thing that I would have you do is explore these on your images. So there's our original, right? And there's our, our image that we're at now. So you know, you could just rule that one right out, right? But we can play with the exposure. We can drop the exposure down, make it a little bit more dramatic, right? You could do it automatically, right? But I don't want to give up too much control, right? So I'm going to do it right about there because I want a little drama, right? And then I'm going to – the depth. So depth – a way to think of depth is when you bring the contrast up sometimes, what you do is you just even out all the tones in your image. They're just flat across the board. So um, do you want a lot of depth or a little bit of depth? It just really kind of depends. And as you can, you can see it changing here and there. You see it, it's almost like somebody turned on the light. Turn off the light. Turn on the light, right? So it's it's bringing up those shadows in your those shadow values in your picture. Vibrancy and fidelity is really going to affect your color. And this is one of the few programs where these two actually work together. In the past, with vibrancy and fidelity, um, when you combine those with it, the algorithms, the 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 mechanics behind this, when you combine those, it, sometimes it would distort or mute. Or, or just mute your colors. It, it would just destroy an image. So you'd have to use them sparingly or just one, go back, process it again. But this is one of the few programs where you could actually use them together. And um, in your camera, you have Vivid, right? And it's just going to deepen this color palette right here. And the one great thing about Perfectly Clear is it, it uses a full color spectrum in terms of how it's processing color. So um, some might just have web-based colors or some might have just limited colors. So there's a lot. And remember I was telling you about sharpening, right? Be careful. That looks great right there. And if, for web use, I'm, uh, you know, I might do something like that, right? Uh, my shadows are not so deep that, you know, they're going to basically break apart. I like to say break apart because it gets people's attention, right? But it's, it's, we're talking about noise, right? The pixels are just basically disintegrating, you know, when you have these dark areas and, what causes it? it? There's a lot of things that cause noise. Um, on the Athen Tech site, if you, I think I'm not sure what chapter it's in. Uh, I think chapter twelve or uh, chapter three on the on the Athen Tech site talks about how cameras, different types of cameras, introduce noise, and sometimes there's no way around it. So keep that in mind when you're when you're sharpening. And we can click on that, so no noise was detected. We're good to go with this image. I could actually use this. Right. So there we go. So we just pull it side by side so we can see the change. I'm just going to slide it down so you can see the change. Right. So this is the, the original capture. Right. And that's where we went with it in perfectly clear just by making adjustments. And let's say um, I really like this setting. Right. And I want to make sure that I'm consistent with it. I can actually go in here and create um, a preset for it. We're going to call this uh, 105-cable car. I shoot cable cars a lot. I shoot transportation a lot. Uh, I shoot this scene a lot. And I'm going to show you a picture that I shot in 2011, and I'm going to show you my more, my more recent one just to prove to you. So we can call this uh, Deep Shadows. See how that works out? Oops. And there's our preset that we've created from that. So I'm just going to click save there. It's going to overwrite the, the one I had. I actually processed this a little bit more than I did originally the first time. And I'm going to be checking in in about five minutes on for questions. So if you have some, that'd be a good time. All right. So I want you to remember this. Let me see. I think it's this one right here. Oh, oh okay. So in, in we can call this environmental cityscape. Um, you see there's a FedEx truck going by there. I'm literally thinking about an ad here, someone that's, that's going to go online and buy a photo like this. They want busy San Francisco. So when I'm out, I like to shoot busyness, you know, maybe a lot of people waiting at a bus stop, um, just drama, right? Let's, let's process this photo really quick. And this time I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to click. We could also use keystrokes, right? Shift, command edit, right? That'll open up the same dialog box. And I'm going to click export. And 
this image looks pretty good, right? I mean, we could probably roll with this, but um, something that I like to do, I, I call it finishing. Some, sometimes I'll look at an image and I want to make sure that if I've made any type of correction on it, um, that I haven't created a cast. And that happens, right? Sometimes you can't even see them. And that's that's the, the irony of this. You can't even see those colors. So this has made it blue. Usually when I see that blue pop in there that hard, I know that the color balance is really good here. And that's one of the tips and gauges I use with Perfectly Clear's fixed tint is I'll look at that. And I'm just like, you know what? That already looks good. If it changes completely blue like that, I know that that white balance is pretty spot on. And that's how I use Perfectly Clear to determine whether or not my white balance is pretty close. Um, and sometimes it doesn't change at all you click on it if it's really spot on but you know i'm not able to control all the conditions out here so this is our landscape mode as you can see it just it's a little bright in here i'm looking at these white spots right it's a little bright and as you can see we just toned it back a little bit i love it because we can now see the detail see this right here this is when i look at whites i look at this kind of stuff and boom now we can see that line traveling all the way through solid you see that so I know, okay, that's a good setting for that. Do we want to open that up? Um, well, we're still losing a lot of the color detail here. You see that? So it's just turning white. And the interesting thing about color, and, and I don't know if you guys know this, but um, on your RGB channel, when the light falls at a certain point, it creates white. So RGB, red, blue, green, um, combined at a certain point, a certain mixture creates white. It, it turns white so you got to be really careful about color right so i'm just going to go back to landscape uh, right there right here's the difference vivid landscape fixed tint and then also sometimes fixed tint can create i'm going to use fixed tint in this case fixed tint can create a lot of issues for your your colors as well it can change the 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 um, tone of your color it could change the intensity of your color so you want to make sure that you tackle those those um, those type of issues okay so there's our photo and let's say you know what I like this but I just I needed a little I just needed a little warmer so I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna drag this all the way back so you can see how how it changes right there's our blue maybe I want it about right there because this it's subjective in terms of how you want to see it right zoom back in Right. And I just picked that line in there just because, you know, it doesn't have to. You don't have it's not an absolute. Right. I just wanted to make that as an, use that as an example, because we're going to look at another photo in a minute where um, it looks kind of blown. The pavement looks gray. OK, yeah, we're good to go. Right. Go back to preset. Zoom out. Take a look at the photo as a whole. There we go. Click save and processes back in. The batch process works the same way. If I'm working with about 30 photos. Uh, I'm going to tell you a hundred, right? Let's say I bring in a hundred photos from, I will load them into perfectly clear and literally go through each photo and just click, 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 click. And the other thing that I like about this is you're, you're basically working on one process, which is correcting it. You're not working on three. You're not trying to, you know, do the white balance, the, the contrast. I mean, you're letting perfectly clear do that for you. One, two, three. There's not a lot to think about. Right. I can focus on what this photo means. I can focus on the crop. So looking at this was like, you know what? I'm going to go in and crop right here. You yeah, can see all that. But when you got a lot of things going on, these are the things that you miss sometimes. And that, that could hurt you. All right. So let's move on to let me I'm going to check in with you guys and see if you have any questions. Okay, looks like we're doing pretty good. If you guys have some questions, this is a good time. Um, we're going to go through this next. As you can see, time is flying. Um, we're going to go through this next 30 minutes pretty quickly. So um, let me see who's let me see who's in today. Okay, looks like we got a good group here. All right, fantastic. Hey, thank you guys for – I know you could be doing other things today. Thank you for coming out and, and listening to me Uh talk about perfectly clear and, and looking at some of the stuff that I do. And uh, if you guys could just sound off in terms of what type of landscape photography you do. And towards the end, we can dialogue. Um, and, and if you don't have time, let's connect on social media and shoot me a message. Hey, Keith, um, 
I saw this and I had a question about that. I'll definitely get back to you, especially, especially if you mention perfectly clear. So I want you to know I'm, I'm here for you. All right. So here's another shot. Um, I'm hand holding this. I'm actually standing in the middle of the street praying to God that I don't get run over. Hey, be careful because the police can harass you for something like this, right? Because it's totally unsafe. And I want you to know that. Okay. So if you're going to do it, I'm crossing on a light, but I've got my back turned to the traffic. So if somebody's coming around a left hand turn, you know, it could be pretty bad, but this is what we do as photographers. And um, these are my busy, I call them busy shots. And I shoot these, this is kind of, I'm going to say this jokingly, this is kind of like a retirement plan, right? Down the road, you know, I'm going to sell stock photographs, I guess. I don't know, something like that. I'm just going to straighten this up a little bit. There's a lot of ways to straighten this up. I'm just going to tilt it. You can also use, uh, there's other tools in Lightroom that you can use, the angle tool, which is fine. A, a, oops. Let me just undo that here. You can just take the um, the angle tool and find a straight line in here like this. You just got to make sure the line is straight. And boop, there you go. Okay. I don't like that. See, I'm a kind of like a control freak. Okay. So I'm just going to go shift, command, E, in the perfectly clear. I'm going to tell you right away that this is a little a little contrasty in terms of it's just the contrast is really high here. My colors aren't popping. They're kind of muted a little bit um, from this. Oops, that's not the one that I want. Shift command E. Okay. Let's go here. I'm going to use export. I'm hitting the wrong key here. I was hitting return. Um, so I'm just going to hit export. Perfectly clear. I've already kind of covered that. You guys got that. So we're just going to go right through that really quick. As you can see, let me see how big this TIFF file is while this is opening up. Okay, so we're working with, so here's a 4,000 by 6,000. I'm shooting on a full frame camera. Uh, so we're probably about a 20 meg file here. I don't see it right away. I have to, okay. Here we go. So here's our file, right? Yeah. You see what I mean? Well, one of the reasons why I know this, and, and here's what I want to share with the with you in terms of workflow, right? I knew this was going to be kind of like fixing a tent type of issue, and we can also do that with landscape, right? Um, the sun's behind me. It's really strong. There's no clouds in the sky, and I'm shooting... I'm constantly moving from light to dark in terms of the direction I'm shooting. The, I mean, I could have put an ND filter on here to kind of solve some of the problem, right? I mean, and I, I carry a ton of ND filters. But in, in the way, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with the ND filter, ND filters are, are like sunglasses that you put over the front of your lens so that you can use a, a little slower shutter speed. As, I mean, I'm sorry, a little, a little, slower, a little slower shutter speed than you normally would. So usually when it's super bright out, the shutter speed goes really fast, right? If you want to slow that down, right? So just one technique to kind of think about. Um, that would have solved some of my problems, right? Being on a tripod would solve um, other problems as well. But, um, you know, I, there just wasn't room for that because I was moving around. My situation is fluid and dynamic. So I'm, I'm out literally running and gunning. So and this is where I rely on my back end processes to correct some of those issues quickly. Right now, if I'm out at Yellowstone Park, I'm going to do everything right. Right. I'm going to set up tripod. I'm not going to be hand holding. I'm going to use filters if needed. I'm going to take the time out because nothing is moving. It's not dynamic. We're shooting it. The weather's dynamic, but we're shooting into a static situation for the most part. Right. So we're going to use landscape mode. And interesting thing about this shot, this is uh, from yesterday, actually. Right. And I'm going to take you to a. Um, shot that I did from 2011 and voila. little little different angle so here's my 2011 shot this was pre um, pre and I'm on the, actually across the street from the location um, my my intention here there's a pole right here trying to cut it out. I mean, this is a tricky shot. Like I literally had to walk up the street looking through the camera 
so I could shoot over the top of these trees and capture this. The idea was to capture this cable car actually in that little strip of light there. And um, I got him right as he entered. And then this is the cable car into the line here. They line up there and then they go out here and then capture the bridge. So that's the shot from 2011. Okay. So a little different perspective. This time I cropped the bridge out, right? Pretty good. And so if you've got 25 of these images, right, and they're just doing different things, pretty much the same ideal, you can batch process these out, you know, basically select them, batch process them, and then come back and pick the one you want based on what you've seen. And that's where this becomes a, a, a time saving feature for, for you as a photographer, hobbyist, whatever the goal may be, right? You want to save as much time as possible because you can waste a lot of time in photography. I'm just going to save that out. Okay, I'm going to show you one more. This one is a little tricky. Um, it's a frame within a frame. I, 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 I use a lot of technique in, in, in some of the photos that I shoot um, in terms of like I'm doing street photography. Like this is a this I call it stacking. So I'm shooting a reflection, panning and, um, you know, motion all in the same thing. Panning, motion, reflection. And I'm actually shooting into a wall. I stood there for probably an hour. This fire truck is coming out of a busy um, fire station. And it, it's almost like every hour they're, they're coming out with the truck. So I stood there and I waited and shot a series of these, type, these types of photos. So with that said, let's take a look at, um, we're going to take a look at one more cable car image. Let's see here. Oh, let's take a look at this one. Now, let me see. How about, yeah, let's take a look at this one. So here's a frame within a frame, right? The sun is actually coming from the right side because I think it's uh, close to about 5 o'clock here, 5.30. And it's a little hot, right? So let's go in here, shift. So we're, we're doing shift command and E in, in uh, Lightroom. Click export. And here's the thing. I'm a little concerned. It's a little hot. I want something a little dramatic because I've got this big separation in in my contrast here. So I've got these deep. That's huge. I mean, the difference between these two, definitely, um, definitely a contrasting shot, right? Versus a shot that I, I call them contrasty when the the contrast is really high. You can't really tell the difference. You know, everything looks blended. That's my definition for contrasty shots, right? So or a lack of contrast. So this one has contrast. We need to bring this down a little bit. So you can go through and just kind of click in. And you know, just from listening to me for the last 30, 38 minutes, we can click on landscape, right? And we're going to get the deepest shadows here, right? So from there, we're going to take things into our own hands. So perfectly clear gave us a good start, right? Now, this overall opacity, if we drag that, we're going to get back to the original image, right? So we're just going to leave that alone. We're going to skip past that. And so in some cases, you may want to use that. And then we're going to drop the exposure. In the one thing that, that I really like about Perfectly Clear is it analyzes each segment of whatever it is in your image, shadow, tone, whatever. It's analyzing it independently. And that's a complicated task. Believe me, most programs, even Lightroom, will make global changes to your image, right? So you adjust the contrast, adjust the contrast for every single thing in there, right? This is adjusting independently, right? It's not going to affect your lights. I mean, it will affect your lights because it's, it's casted over, but it's just adjusting that tone out, right? So I'm going to turn that all the way down, and then I'm just going to play with the depth here to see what, what I'm going to get. Uh, nothing, right? vibrancy we can turn vibrancy up to increase the color right we can turn and this is literally how i make my adjustments because i want to see i want to see the change right so it's dropping my shadows standard you see how it opened up vivid we're going to increase the colors a little bit and if we put these images side by side you'll be able to see the difference right away so and this is this is a fine one too right so if you look right here at the roof, you'll notice that there's just a lot more. And that's the level of detail that I, that I appreciate with this program, right? Here it's kind of muted a little bit. 
here we got a little bit more depth and that's really how those cable car roofs look not all of them but i mean for the most part the the newer cars do and here we've been able to we, we're not going to be able to pull all that that detail back in that i mean blown highlight is blown highlight but you know we knocked it down a little bit there's our image we're ready to rock and roll I'm just going to click the save button here all right so let's look at now i'm going to dive into a process that i call finishing right so these images have been processed um some i've used as many as 20 layers to you know get it where it needed to be um i'm going to click down here in the landscape and just to kind of give you an idea of some of the stuff that i do um Seattle, this is San Francisco, I'll show that. So I like to pan a lot, right? Um, here it was about the stripes, right? I'm gonna take these images and I'm gonna run them through perfectly clear to make sure that I haven't created more problems for myself, especially when it's time to print. And by the way, I print a lot of my images through um, um, White House Labs. They're located in Germany, but they provide service as if they're in the United States, it's pretty amazing. So White House Labs. Um, Probably a good idea if you're going to do it to use a, a full frame sensor um, or if you're going to shoot crop sensor because their sizes are not standard to or standard to the U.S. sizes. They're just they're more geared towards fine art. So um, four by five, six by six, those are going to work great with their print sizes. Right. So here's one of my favorite images. I actually have this hanging up in my house. Right. This is the type of image I'm going to finish. This this was post or this was pre perfectly clear. And so there's a couple different ways. This is uh, the menu driven way, like literally clicking through export, right? And this is a JPEG file. So I've already printed this a few times, it, shown it in galleries and things like that. Okay, so here we go. So right off the top, I'm just gonna go right over here to presets. I'm in landscape mode. I'm just gonna click on, and you could see like it just lifted. The look, it's, it's like a delicate touch. Matter of fact, if I put them side by side, you can, if you look faintly, you'll see right here, right in here, right where we just had basically a little bump in color. Right, it's that sensitive. Perfect clear is that sensitive. Look at that. Right, fixed tint. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it as well as I can, but this just introduced a little bit more magenta, right? You see that green magenta? So on your wheel, you have green magenta. So perfectly clear is saying, hey, I don't know what you want me to do. I can give you the opposite of what you have, right? And give you the opposite of what you have, but you know, not ah, exposure is exposure. And by the way, this was a very strange day because usually it's, it's really like socked in with fog or really clear. I mean, this was the strangest day, and, and I was hand-holding this. I was actually working with a client, and I saw this shot, and I turned around and got it. Um, there's our HD mode, which really brings up your shadows, opens up your shadows, right? But I think for the most part, it's going to be landscape mode. And that's how I finish off my images, and I'll just go ahead and click and save that. Here's another one. Um, I've been using this image for years. That, By the way, that was shot uh, last year. This image was shot in, this is the Bay Bridge. So wherever I go, I try to shoot a lot of bridges. This was shot in December of 2011, right? And um, interesting enough, this was definitely pre, um, definitely pre, perfectly clear. And let me, let me just peek in on you guys really quick. All right, everybody's doing good. Oops. Okay, so um, I've used this shot a, in a lot of a lot of work just because of and a lot of ad, just a lot of stuff, right? This was in the wee hours in the morning. Um, this is uh, this is Treasure Island here, and then in the background we have uh, Alameda. This used to be the old Alameda Naval Air Station. And then that's the other part of the bridge, which is no longer there. They tore it down and built a new section. So there's a span that looks something like this. But um, here's an image that, you know, definitely was, the, I'm going to say, was really the start of me shooting landscape, right? That is with the tent fix. I'm going to just reduce that down so you can see them side by side. 
Um, if I really had to look at the two images and say which one best represents the scene, definitely this one right here. So I know that the and, and you can see it's it's basically giving you the inverse and the inverse uh, exp tent, so to speak. I was going to say exposure. I'm so used to saying exposure. It's giving you the inverse tent. So this is not wrong. It's just the opposite. And that's what Perfectly Clear does, right? And then you can see it just opened it up. I actually like that, right? It just opened it up even more. You see that? It's not so dark. And sometimes with printers, um, if it'll print like a stop, third stop. It just kind of depends on your camera, right? So, and what you're printing on. Metal, canvas, you know, you might want to open it up like that. But I think I'm going to stick with that. It's just it's a little bit more vibrant. There's um, vivid, right? Fixed noise. So let's go with landscape mode and let's see what it, if we can push anything else. Let's push some pixels. Let's see here. So we're just going to play with the sliders. There's our original right there, right? There's the enhancement. Just one quick enhancement. Exposure. So we can exposure down. I don't know. Maybe that's it right there. It's a little deep, right? It's a little bit richer. Maybe about right there. Let's play with the depth. So we just opened up the background. I don't know because we already have that light back there. So I don't want to open up the background too much. Right. And, and I'm just thinking this through vibrancy. So we're going to pump those colors just a little bit higher. Probably about right there. And at this point, I'm thinking so standard. And, OK, so we'll leave that at vivid. At this point, I'm really thinking about the type of paper, the type of medium that I'm going to print this on. Sharpening, uh, we, if I bumped up the sharp, we don't need to, but you can see fine large, right? It just kind of chewed it up, right? We don't really, we don't need to sharpen anymore. So I just pop that back down, right? You see that? Um, I originally worked on this photo in Nick Filters, and as you can see, um, in the process of doing that, you know, I it definitely, we definitely just took it up a notch, and I've actually printed this image, so. Um, and the print looks really good, but I think it looks better here. And I could probably go into Photoshop and get those little stars out, right? Um, but but there you have it. I'm just click the Save button. Or right, before we do, let me just go to Presets so we can come back. Click Save. Okay, so this is loading back into a corrected folder. And here's that corrected folder right here, right? So I'm going to show you. Let's, let's go backwards, right? Um... Here's an image that I shot. This is uh, the Sutro Bass in San Francisco, and it's kind of tricky, boy. If you lose your balance, I mean, you're you're in the water. I mean, so if you're a photographer carrying gear, boy, let me tell you, you got to be really careful there. Let's go. Um, let's look at the Sutro Bass photo, right? This is also these are all pre. Um, these are all pre. Perfectly clear. We got about. 12 minutes left. All right. So as you can see, it just kind of, the sun's over here. It's pretty bright. I saw these people sitting there. And then I also saw this guy with a selfie stick up here. So it's kind of like my little thing that I like to do in photos, you know, find those little oddities, you know, big and small to show scale. Right. So let's just click on tint, fixed dark, just to show you kind of, now I'll be honest with you. I rarely use fixed dark. Um, it's not, and I've processed a lot of images since I've been using perfectly clear, but I really use fixed dark. Well, let's try beautify beautify. Um, well, that's a whole nother story. It's, um, if you're shooting portraits, it's a great feature. Okay. The one that's given me the most interesting change would definitely be landscape here. I like that deep richness that it's given me. I can still see details in here. Um, it's looking good. There we go. Hey, by the way, before I forget, um, Rick Salmon, um, very well-known photographer, he's going to be um, on a webinar with Perfectly Clear. And he's going to be talking about Cuba. I think it's in, it's in August. I'm not sure of the date. You can check the website and uh, get, get the date that uh, he's going to be doing that webinar. It's going to be a, a really good opportunity. So be sure to catch that. Rick Salmon, you can Google him. He's a great photographer and uh, he shoots all over the place. So all right, there we go. I think I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to click the save button. There we go. 
All right, I'm going to do one more for you. So here's another one. Uh, actually, you know, I try not to get too attached to my images, but there's just some that I really like. Um, I like this one for the processing and the conditions that I shot it under. Uh, so let's take a look at this. I want to see, uh, this is, I didn't use perfectly clear for this image, I don't believe. So I'm just going to go into export. And as you can see, it opens up pretty quickly. Ah, okay. Pretty good. As you can see, fixed tint. So we're right on. It's giving me the complete opposite, right? You see how that magenta just really popped in there from here, right? Actually, that's – I did use perfectly clear, actually. Uh, so here's how I would finish this image. It's processed in uh, – I think I use Nick filters to do a lot of the, the detail work. And um, I don't even think I went into Photoshop with this. So Photomatics, Nick filters – and perfectly clear to, to, to basically put this together. And if I wanted to adjust down, maybe it's just a little too blue. I don't know, right? I'm just Monday morning quarterbacking myself, right? I can go right into tone. Where are we at here? Let me drag this back. I want to see what this is going to do. Okay, that's perfect, right? Okay, so I want to go into tint, right? And no tint detected. Okay, so it's perfect, right? We don't need to do anything. We don't want to over-process it. Oh, wow. That vibrancy right there really pumped it up. Probably about right there. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to roll with that. I think I like that. So, um as you can see, that's where we started. It was a little it was a little hot going into it, right? That looked good on on print, but that would make for a great metal print right there that's what I'm thinking because the highlights are really popping off really sharp right I'm just gonna enlarge it yeah it looks good I'm at 50% here there you go so that's a good example of how perfectly clear can and, and I, I think I'm gonna I'll show you one more I'd like to end on this note because it's a good one and this is so what I've done is I've actually gone back and, and reprocessed a lot of my images and, and I found, you know, just little, little bitty things in them in some of them with perfectly clear. It's almost like uh, perfectly clear is a, uh, a detective. Right. We do some detective work. Now, you guys are probably laughing at me right now, but um, we're, we can even check to see if there's noise in there. Right. So all I'm going to do is click on landscape if I want to get that back. And uh, I'm going to go right down to Vibrant and just push the Vibrant up. See how easy that is? Right? And if I want to get aggressive with it, I can just go all the way full bore. But if I do that, I'm going to lift this up just to make sure. Right? And I think I'm going to reprint this on metal. By the way, um, I'm going to be uh, printing a series of work with uh, White House Custom Color. And I think this is definitely one of the ones I'm, I'm going to print on. Uh, they have this shadow gap process that they use with acrylic. Um, I think this is going to be one of them for sure. So, all right, I'm going to save that out. And let's look at uh, let's look at one more. You guys want to look at something weird? Okay, so I'm at the Space Needle. This is this image was really worked, and it was actually photographed on an overcast day in Seattle, which is almost every single day, um, except for this summer when they actually got a uh, a heat wave. So um, I got there, and I'm like, "What can I do to to really make this image work? You know that I'm going to shoot. This has been shot a bazillion times, right? And as you can see." We just opened up a little bit, right? So I just I just clicked fixed tint, right? That could work, right? There's our HD, HD fixed tint has given me the most dramatic change so far. So I think I'm gonna roll with that and depth, vibrancy. Let's pump it up and see what we get here. All right. And anytime I do something, every time anytime I push the pixels, I'm gonna zoom in and make sure that I'm not over processing or ca catching chromatic aberrations. And those happen, right? I'm hand holding. I actually I was on a tripod with this, right? Okay, that looks looks decent, right? Boom, there you go. All right. Okay, you guys. So um, just in the last six minutes, I am going to show you. 
let me give you a visual, right, and a couple ideals. Editing workflows, editing, editing workflows are layered. Everything happens in a layer, and the more layers you create in your workflows, and not, not the more layers, but literally the more important layers you create in your, your workflow, if you mess up, you can always just erase that layer and you have your original layer. So that's the concept behind Photoshop. I'm a Photoshop. So everything is layers. If you're not working on your original layer, you're creating a layer on the top, you just take it out, put another one in, you won't lose your work. It's a great ideal. Same thing in editing, right? It's the exact same process. So here's how it really looks. Here's how it fits in visually. So you have, you're going to load your files into a master folder, raw folder, whatever you're calling it, right? And then go right into perfectly clear after you've edited the photos and then out to a corrected folder. And that's because I call it a corrected folder because I generally I've corrected something that I saw in the photo that wasn't really related to anything creative. It was just something I needed to be corrected. I was shooting against the sun, had no filter on, whatever the case may be, right? So that's the this is the visual workflow here. Hey, I, I, I say this just about in every webinar, right? Corrections are the foundation, you know, what they, you know, the, the old cliche, garbage in, garbage out, garbage in, garbage out. Keep that in mind, right? When you're shooting, if you start with a bad photo, you start with a bad situation and you try to make it better, you're just going to spend a lot of time. All right. I checked in. You guys um, didn't have any questions or comments. That's always usually good. Pretty good. Right. Um, here's a code you can use to save some, some money. Right, I like to save you some money, at least 10%, and it's Keith BP C15, and you'll save 10%. Right, and also I will be at Photoshop World at the Athen Tech booth in Las Vegas, and it's at the um, it's at uh, God, it's in Las Vegas. I can't remember the name of the hotel, so. Um, but you can go online and Google it. It's uh, the Mandalay Bay. There we go. Okay, so we're at the Mandalay Bay, and um, I will be speaking at 1 o'clock. Sometimes that'll change. Um, if it does, just follow me on Twitter. I'll, I'll tweet all the changes and anything that's happening. Um, there we go, you guys. We, uh, we got about three minutes left. I'm going to check in for some questions. And... Um, if you have an opportunity, I'm going to just show you this. I'm going to take you here really quick. If you have an opportunity, you have some time on your hands. Um, this is my architectural blog. As you can see, I really like to photograph architectural. This is off of my architectural site. And um, I just kind of talk about shooting with different types of lenses. And, and what I'll do is I'll photograph. The, this was made with a Rockinon. And it's a pretty good lens. But um, if you're shooting at f 71 it's pretty decent, right? Interiors that I photographed and, you know, why we might blow out the windows like that. Uh, let's see what else here. Here's some more interiors. Um, people scapes. I call them people scapes, right? Um, really are just a matter of timing here on this shot. And remember that shot I was telling you about earlier, that the last one we just processed with the ferry building? Here's the uh, Here's another version of that same shot right here this is this is the uncropped version in black and white so um there we go lens baby so i do shoot with a lens baby Oct optic 80 so if you're a lens baby person or you own one there's a lot of things you can do with that and i, I usually like to use the slice of focus to uh, draw attention to whatever i'm doing i usually um i'll shoot it with black and white color right um here's that same lens with uh processed and perfectly clear right this is a pretty tough situation because i actually had to go in and uh shoot kind of it was really bright outside so to make that work and what i did is i used perfectly clear to kind of bring the bridge back in in the shape here color shape <laughs> all right puerto rico so there's a lot of information on here I think that'll help you. And then you can also click on the portfolio and you can kind of see a lot of the stuff that I do. Um, a lot of the landscape images. This is actually one of my favorites. Uh, photographed uh, with a 50 millimeter lens. 
All right. There we go. And there's a, here's a, another. We covered this earlier, but um, here's a, a different variation of that shot that you saw. I'm actually standing in the middle of the street. And this is California at um, Cal, on California at Grant. So in the middle of the street. And I, I am in a crosswalk on a green light crossing. So I had to run out and take the picture and then jump back on the sidewalk. All right, folks. There we go. So let me just jump on these questions. I'm still here. Let me just go over this one more few minutes ago. So late. Okay. Um, I'll have to check on that. I'm not sure how they do um, the web, how they archive the webinars. I know that um, you, you'd have to check on the site and and see, um, Dennis. But um, I, I tell you what, um, whatever platform you're on, social media wise, email me or something, and, and just pull my pull my attention to it, and I'll I'll find out for sure. But I'm not. At this point, I'm not really sure on the process of archiving. Um, okay, Steve, um, I use um, the Nikon software <laughs> for the uh, for the raw processing, and the reason why is because if you make adjustments on the camera itself, those those uh, when you transfer those raw files, they go right into um, they go right into the file and in, in the processing. If you use, um, hang on, okay, Dennis, I, I see that. If you're, um, if you use Lightroom, it may omit. Like for instance, I know for a fact that if you use uh, Vivid, and and I'm speaking only for Nikon. If you use Vivid in your, you set the Vivid camera or sharpening, and you load those settings won't load into Lightroom. It's only going to load tint and tone, and all the other information, exposure information. So. To maintain the integrity of the file that I'm using, um, I just I use the the Nikon Capture DX software, and um, it works perfectly. So this, if you're a Nikon shooter, Capture NXD, that's what I use. It's free, and it's one step in there in, in the workflow. It, you can make adjustments, and there you go. Okay, Dennis. Um, yeah, you can. Yeah, Twitter for sure. Yeah, catch me on Twitter. And that way, um, the people at um, Perfectly Clear, they can see that message and know, you know, that you're looking. And I, I'm going to – it takes a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time, you guys. I'm going to try to get these out on my YouTube page as well. Um, but, you know, video is intense, you know, l uploading it and keywording and doing all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I just – my Twitter, my social media is just massive. And so – um, I'm going to definitely try to get that done. Anyhow, um, it's been great, you guys. I'm glad everybody kind of stuck around, and um, I hope I was able to help. It's been great. If you have any other questions, hit me really quick. If not, at Keith B. Dixon on Twitter, I will respond. Thank you. I appreciate everybody coming out.